Hello everybody and welcome back to Feed the Beast Quickie with Black Dog Z. And today we're going to talk about the induction smelter, the sawmill, the pulverizer, and the redstone furnace. Not in that particular order, but we're definitely going to talk about all those. So as you can see here, we have a full range of recipes. We'll come over to the redstone furnace first. It uses two copper, a couple of stone bricks, the machine frame, the regular old redstone, and I do believe that redstone reception coil. So those are the basic items that you need, of course, to make most of these. Now to build a few of these, you're going to need to have gold and, of course, redstone. And to build this guy here, you need any type of glass, an iron, or steel with gold. So it's fairly simple, just about any type of glass works, as you can see, switching through the various types of glass. So you can use just about any type of glass to make it of your choosing. You'll need one of these for each of these machines. You'll notice that they don't change too much. They all require copper. They all require the reception coil and the machine frame. The stuff in the middle sides change and the stuff on top changes. So over here with the pulverizer, you're going to need flint and you're going to need a piston. Over here, you're going to need wooden planks, and an iron axe. And over here, you'll need invar ingots and a bucket. So that's your basics for the various machines. Let's take a look at first the redstone furnace. Redstone furnace, very simple to operate, gets its energy bar filled here. Of course, we can use those tuberous flux capacitors we shown before to charge them up, or you can actually hook them up to an engine that we showed before. Now, they're real simple. We just go in here, we grab ourselves some more, we toss it in, and it cooks it up fairly quickly. You'll see here, it's power usage, 20 RF per tick, maximum power, 20 RF per tick, and energy stored is 20,000 RF. That's what it stores. 24,000, sorry. And it produces one gold ingot. Now, that's not the best way to use your, uh, to use your ores. The best way to use your ores is to put them in the pulverizer. Now, when you put them in the pulverizer, you'll notice that the energy does go down, but the tuber's flux capacitor is going to fill it right back up as soon as it can. It doesn't fill as fast as the machine uses, but that's all right. You'll notice that this one also has double the maximum power of the furnace. Pulverizer does take a little bit more, but it doubles your ore. So now you'll take a look, and you have two pulverized gold. You can put those in the furnace from one ore, and instead of getting one ingot, you'll get two. That's always nice to have. So now you get two instead of one, and that way you don't have to have as many ores in order to do what you need. Now, you'll notice that they have these things on the top and on the sides. There's even one on the bottom and on the back, even though you can't see them. And you'll take a look here under the Configuration tab. And you'll notice that those different colors are displayed here. Now, the orange is this slot here. The blue would be that slot there. So you'll see that we can actually tell it... what we want it to do. So currently we have it set to nothing. We could have it import from this side, output on that side. And that way we can actually do something like this. Let's grab ourselves a hopper. We're just gonna grab a quick hopper and a chest. So now we have a hopper and a chest. Now when you're setting down a hopper, of course you need to click on the side that you want it to point to. And there we go. And then we can sit down the chest on the other side. And then if we grab some of this gold ore here that we have, we just toss it in the hopper, automatically make its way into the furnace, and then as soon as it cooks it up, it'll output it to the chest. You can also use uh, other mods in order to transport the items around. Even this mod has some transportation piping that you can use instead of using your basics, hopper and chests and things like that. And it'll allow you to automate it very easily. And of course, you could take your pulverizer and put it right beside your redstone furnace. Why don't we go ahead and do that? So we're going to take our pulverizer here, and we're just going to break it like so. We'll break that. And now, unfortunately, pulverizers do not keep their, in their, their power when they're put in this way. So we're just going to grab ourselves a new flux capacitor, because that one's almost empty. Flux capacitor. We're just going to grab a... Yeah, why not? We'll use tuberous. So we'll just toss a tuberous flux capacitor in there. And it's going to go ahead and charge things up right away for us. As that's charging, we're going to take a look here. Take this big potato out of here. 
And we're going to grab some more ore. But this time we're going to make sure that the red is set there. And we're going to set this to blue. And we'll set these to nothing. Now the nice part is you can set it to red. And you'll notice there's an extra output slot here. You can set it to yellow so that it outputs there. Or you can set it to orange and it'll do both. Now generally with these, you're going to want to set it to orange. Very easy to use. You set it to orange, it'll just output everything to that side. And then we can take our hopper. Which I do believe will still go there. Yeah. So we put our hopper there. And then we can literally take... Oh, that knocked it off. All right. We literally take our ore, put it in the hopper. And you can put multiple different types of ore in there. It'll automatically pulverize it up. And it'll output the um, output the stuff right into here. Let's watch that happen. So you'll notice nothing here. All of a sudden, two pulverized gold here, and that's outputting right to the chest. So this is a basic automated system, very basic. You can put multiple ores in your hopper, or you can even put a chest on top of it, of course, like you always have, in order to output a bunch of stuff to the pulverizer. Now you'll notice that the pulverizer is not running very fast. It's only using 17 RF per tick. And the reason for that is how much power it has. As the tuberous flux capacitors sit there and power it up, you're going to notice that it goes faster and faster. So now we just take out this baked potato, put another one of these in. <coughs> so the problem is, of course, that without having more capacity, we're not going to get anywhere. So I'm just going to grab a larger flux capacitor, not just a tuberous one and toss it in there. We'll talk about those in a later episode on how they work. So you'll see the bigger one filling this up and you'll see the power usage is going up. So there's two different modes that this thing operates in. It's got basically the, the, the regular power usage, max it out, it goes as fast as it can using a certain amount of power and it'll output it here. Now, as the power gets lower, it actually becomes more efficient. So if you leave the power at a low level, you can actually get more grinding per power, as long as you don't mind, of course, it taking up the time to, um, it taking up the time to, to do it uh, takes a little longer. The other thing that can happen when you're grinding ores is there's a small chance for each ore that something extra will appear down here. That's usually like, um, let's just take a look. So if I just go to ore here, and I look at, let's take a look at iron ore. Oh. So if I take a look at its uses, and we go to macerator or pulverizer, here we go. So you'll see that it makes pulverized iron, but it also makes pulverized ferrous metal. So you actually get ferrous metal 10% of the time out of iron. And of course, all the others have their basics that they can do. So if I just go like this, and then I go uses for this. And I go to the pulverizer, you'll notice that this one will create cinnabar 25% of the time if you can get the redstone ore. Now it has to be the ore block for the cinnabar, but you'll notice it's really easy to look up. You can look up all the various recipes for that. So that's the basic uses of your redstone furnace and pulverizer. Next up, we have the sawmill. Now there's nothing real special about the sawmill, but during early game when you need lots of planks to build stuff, you don't really want to have to use your crafting table or, you know, even your internal crafting grid because all you get is four planks out of it. If you actually have a little bit of power that you're willing to put into this, uses a maximum 20, just like the furnace, you can toss it in here, and you'll get six planks instead of four. Costs a little bit of power, but you also get sawdust. If you remember sawdust, we did that earlier for, um, for making um, the florbs. Now the florbs, of course, need sawdust, so this is an easy way to get it early game. And you get lots of extra spruce for your money. So in this case, it's spruce. It could be any type of wood. And you'll get lots of extra. And it'll just saw it up for you. And you'll get sawdust. Now with sawdust, it actually has more uses. You can make a compressed sawdust. You can make florbs. And then with the compressed sawdust, you can make charcoal. And that's the nice part about that. So you can get an extra piece of charcoal just by having this here. All you have to do is go over to your nice little uh, crafting table, take your sawdust, go like that, and you get a compressed, you get compressed sawdust. Cook that up in your oven. I'm just gonna take that out. Oh, looks like the oven is running out of power. Why don't we go ahead and grab this flux capacitor. Just toss it in here. And you'll see that it cooks it up and it's gonna make us some charcoal.
All right, there's our charcoal. So that's a real easy way to get plenty of wood and charcoal for what you need. Last up, we have the induction smelter. Now the induction smelter is a little more difficult to operate. It has multiple slots, two inputs and two outputs. And the reason for that is because there's a bunch of different stuff that you can use. Now, by default, if you want to just cook an ore, you need to put sand in. And by doing so, you'll cook an ore just like normal. You will get your two gold ore, but instead of getting your other item that you would have gotten, you got rich slag. Now, there's only a percentage chance that you'll get rich slag instead of regular slag. Sometimes it'll be regular, sometimes it'll be rich. But when you use rich slag to cook an ore, instead of just automatically doubling your ore, it triples it. Look at that. So when we used the induction smelter, first of all, using sand and your uh, ore, it automatically doubled it. So you don't have to use both of these big bad boys over here. You can do it in one single block that takes up less power, um, but you'll need a su steady supply of sand in order to keep that going. And then when you produce rich slag, you can use it to triple your ores instead of double them. That makes for a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but we've shown you everything, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. Have a good evening!